Rule 9-4 describes the ways the ball is, is and is not allowed to be contacted by players. This rule establishes a lot of definitions, so we'll go through what the rules mean and then see some examples in action. Be sure that you understand the differences between these terms so that if you need to offer an explanation to a coach, you're using the correct words. We referees often use the term contact interchangeably with the word hit. But as we can see in the first two articles of this rule, the two terms are not synonymous. A contact includes any touch on the ball, such as a pass, set, attack, or a block. Whereas when we count to three for each team, we are counting team hits. Article three clarifies that neither a block nor a simultaneous contact by opponents, which is usually referred to as a joust, counts as one of the three team hits. So in this way, the term hit is more restrictive than the term contact. Article three said that each team gets only three hits before the ball crosses the net. Article four defines what the term crosses the net means. The illustration above is a diagram looking at the court side on. The large black bar is the pole and the white space and dashed line represent the vertical plane of the net. The ball is round and much wider than the vertical plane of the net, and that's important to remember when making judgments involving the location of the ball relative to the net. Let's take a look at the three ways a ball can be considered to have crossed the net. In part A of the rule, we'll look for the ball to have completely crossed the plane of the net. You'll see a still frame at the moment that meets that definition. At this point, the entire ball has crossed into the opponent's space, so the ball has crossed the net. In part B, we'll see opponents contact the ball while it is over the net. Again, a still frame at the moment of contact will show that some part of the ball is over the plane of the net. Nevertheless, by rule, the ball is considered to have crossed the net. Finally, in part C, we'll see blockers reaching into the opponent's space. The referee will have to make a judgment as to whether that action is legal, but if it is, then at the moment of contact by the block, the ball is considered to have crossed the net. If you've heard coaches, players, or parents complain about a lift or a carry, then you're familiar with Article 5. Article 5 des describes legal contact during play. Notice the terms lift and carry are not in this or any rule set. This is the first really subjective rule that we find in Rule 9. Note that there's nothing in the rule that states anything about a player's body position, the position of the ball, the spin on the ball, the sound the ball makes as it's contacted, or the technique the player uses to play the ball. Every contact of the ball must be judged by the officials to be either legal or illegal, and there are no automatic calls. Let's take a look at some examples of referee judgment. A legal contact can be made by any part of the body and should not allow the ball to come visibly to rest or involve prolonged contact. Since there are many ways to play the ball, both conventional and unusual, we try to focus on looking for catches and throws. Here are a few easier examples to get started. Did you see the player accidentally catch the ball in her arms as she tried to play it? The correct signal for this violation is the illegal hit signal. This James River team has been red hot since they lost a deep run in the middle part of the regular season. This player catches the ball, believing the rally was over. He didn't realize the block had touched the ball, giving his team three more contacts. Again, the signal is illegal hit. Watch the attack come from the right. 
This contact is a throw and should be called. Up next, we have some plays that should not be called as caught or thrown. In this clip, watch the setter on the right dump the ball with one hand. Her motion is quick and the ball doesn't stay in her hand any longer than it would if she were setting a teammate. Here we see a one-handed set followed by an unusual play. Neither the set nor the unusual play by the left front is a catch or a throw. In the next three clips, decide if you see a caught or thrown ball. How about here? What about here? Or here or here? How about this one-handed set? Consistency in our decisions is key from the first point to the final whistle. But being consistent is hard when the ways the ball is contacted can vary so greatly. Here are a few of the final points in a championship match. Consider all the judgments the referee must make about catches and throws. How about that? Or this? Or that? Or this? What about that? Or that? In this final clip, the referee calls a caught ball. This is a really hard call to make, and there may be disagreement even among referees about whether to call this an illegal hit. Talk to your mentor about the things to consider and the things not to consider when it comes to determining an illegal contact. Articles 6, 7, and 8 define simultaneous, successive, and multiple contacts. Simultaneous contact can be made by players on the same team or by players on opposite teams, but the requirement is that the contacts happen at the same moment. The rulebook also states that simultaneous contacts by teammates is counted as only one hit and that any player may play the next ball as long as the team has hits remaining. Successive contacts and multiple contacts, by contrast, are made by the same player. The only difference is whether the player makes the contacts in two separate attempts or in one single attempt to play the ball. Multiple contacts are allowed on the first team hit. Let's take a look at examples of these three different types of contact. In this clip, watch for a simultaneous contact by opponents, followed by a multiple contact by the middle, who contacted the ball twice in one attempt to play the ball. Here, something happens after the middle is blocked. Two distinct contacts are made by the middle. One happens while she's on the way down from the attack, and then she makes a second attempt to play the ball when she lands. These are successive contacts. Keep an eye on number six in black. Did you catch it? After blocking, she plays the ball into the net and then pops it up in a second attempt. This contact by number three is made in one attempt to play the ball. It contacts his left hand and then his right hand, so this is a multiple contact. There's a simultaneous contact hidden by the antenna here, followed by a successive contact by number two. That's the end of rule 9-4. This one is a toughie. On top of all the terminology that's introduced in this rule, 
the fact that it's so subjective means that you're really going to understand it more as you gain experience. Be sure you get out there and watch as much volleyball as you can and talk to people about it. Talk to your mentors. Ask them their opinions about whether something is a multiple contact or an illegal contact. As you see more and more, example, you'll, more and more examples, you'll begin to internalize those rules for yourself. Good luck and I'll see you in another video.